Hello friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. And one question I get asked quite a bit when it comes to making skirts for little girls is how, what size squares do you use and how many and how do you figure it out? How do you figure it out by length and width? Now this, what I'm going to talk about is going to be how to customize the basic patchwork skirt. I have kind of a one size fits most skirt and how can you customize that to fit people who are smaller or larger and we're going to talk about that. Now what I have right here are three tiers ready to go together for a girl skirt. Now I these I'm using in this particular skirt I decided to use 10 inch squares but I'm only working in increments of five rather than six like I do with the adult skirts typically the first tier is six so then everything is in increments of six so it would be six, twelve, twenty-four, and forty-eight for a four-tier skirt and then for the three-tier obviously it would stop at the twenty-four now since this is in increments of five this is going to go five for the first tier, ten for the second tier, and twenty for the third tier. But I'm still using ten inch squares on this. But you can go, go smaller squares or still do the six, increments of six, and do even smaller squares. But you've got to decide what it is you want to do, what, what's the length you want, and what's the width. Now you have to keep in mind that like the way I try to design the girl skirts is I, I like to make them, and this goes for adult skirts too, plenty wide enough that they're not too bulky for someone who's tiny, but also wide enough to fit people of larger sizes. And this especially applies for making a skirt for a young girl. You want to give her room to grow, and I like to do this specifically for skirts that people order up for me. When I make the skirt for a young girl, I want it to fit. I want it to go clear to the ground when they get it, so that as they grow, they'll still be able to wear it for a long period of time, and then also have it fit up to maybe a 45-inch hips and waist, but be able to cinch it up to fit maybe an 18-inch waist and so that they can wear it for a very long period of time and it still looks cute even when it's when there's lots of fabric gathered up there or when they grow and they're filling it out a little bit more that's the beauty of this style of skirt so how do you figure this out well let me go back to starting with how to figure out how to make it bigger when making an adult skirt without having to add so much more fullness because we already know for an adult four tier skirt it's going to be a minimum of seven yards and up to ten. My skirts will fit up to 55 inches but right to 55 inch hips and waist. So I've changed it so now it says 53 to allow a couple inches if someone's 53 inches at the hips and waist they know they've got a couple inches of play there. So what if somebody contacts me and says well I already you know my hips are right at 50 or maybe 56 or larger what do I do to accommodate them without having to add so much fat much more fabric to the skirts. So some people think we'll just go bigger squares all the way all the way down. Well no you don't want to do that because again you're coming back to the problem the skirts are already quite a bit of fabric even making 11 by 11 inch squares or 10 by 11 inch rectangles you're gonna you're talking about a lot of fabric by the time you get down to that fourth tier with the 48 squares around there so all you need to do is add your width or if you're wanting the skirt to be longer because typically my skirts are 34 inches long maybe you want it to be 36 inches long you make a rectangle just in the top tier so the top tier can go for a, for someone who's taller but doesn't need extra width they can go 12 inch by 10 inch rectangles with the with the rectangle going vertically and that'll add two inches to the overall length of the skirt because I just had a lady that specifically wanted 36 inches in length of her skirt and so that's all I had to do and I didn't have to charge her anymore for that because I'm only adding two inch to those tops two inches each to the top six squares now the same thing goes if it's someone who wants the same length but wants it wider 
I might make 12 or 11 by 10 inch squares. It just depends on how much more they want. And then turn them sideways so they're going to go horizontally. So if they feel like they need 6 inches more, then I'm going to do 11 by 10. If they need more than that, then I'm going to do 12 by 10 inch squares. And, or rectangles rather, and then turn them sideways. So then what happens with the rest of the rows if I do them all 10 by 10s? Well, all it is is you simply on the second tier is you're going to gather your squares a little bit less on that second tier. Because for the patchwork skirt, you already have to gather more than you would for just a solid skirt to get all your seams to line up nicely. That's why it makes it so much more fabric. Uh, so you just gather a little bit less on that second tier and then when you go to add the third and fourth tiers you're going to gather it the same as you would either way you're matching up your seam so you're matching up your seams let's say here's the first tier okay so i get i'm just going to show you two the two squares on the first tier and i'm not going to take apart the second tier because i don't want to confuse myself and then on the second tier you're, you're going to gather it so that it matches, each seam is going to match up. So you're going to have these straight lines. Now if you're confused about this and you haven't seen my previous how to make a patchwork skirt video, go ahead and check that out. I'll link to it right up here. Okay, so now back to the little girl skirt. So how do you figure it out? So you're talking about a little, little girl. Maybe she's only, you only want it to be 21 inches. What you want to do is get your tape measure and measure from where she's typically going to wear her skirt on her waist or on her hips. That's sometimes a mistake uh, people make is they'll measure from the waist, but if the little girl is most likely to wear it on her hips, you want to make sure that you measure from there. Either that or she's going to have to start wearing her skirt on her waist at least for a while until she grows into it. So measure from wherever it is that she wears her skirts and keep in mind this is an elastic drawstring waist and then all the way down to the length to where you want the skirt to end so if you want it to end right just above the ground measure to there if you want it to end right at her ankles measure to there okay so let's say that length comes out to be 21 inches so you got to figure out First of all, how many tiers are you going to do and how many squares do you want to do? Again, I do for girl skirts, I always do three tiers and I'll do my squares anywhere from 8 to 10 inches depending on the overall size. So what I need to do is I need to take that 21 inches and I'm going to add 2 inches to the length to account for the folding over twice at the waist because you got to fold over once, about a half inch first and then fold it over another full inch and I always like to be generous and, and I'll just say two inches but you, if you want to be more precise go an inch and a half but I'm just going to go two inches in this case so I take 21 and plus two that's 23 inches long now I also have to account for the seams the seam allowance so I typically allow at least an inch at each seam so I've got three tiers so I'm going to have a seam here and I'm going to have a seam here between the, the top tier. Usually I'll just count an inch for each tier. So that's one, two, three. So right now we're at 23 inches plus another three inches is 26 inches. And then you may want to count a little bit more for the actual hem. But 26 inches should give you the amount you need once you once you add all that together and figure that in and that's just kind of a rounded off figure and this usually works pretty good for me now you're going to take that 26 inches 26 and you're going to divide it by the amount of tiers that you're using and so what you're going to come to is 8.6 inch size squares so I would go eight and a half or even nine just depending on how much play you allowed for yourself there. If you figured bigger when you're when you're added all these inches up, then go with an eight and a half inch square. If you're thinking, uh, if you were not being so generous, then go with a nine inch square. Because the thing is, you can still make adjustments as you go to make it fit better to once you have the skirt all together. Now, 
The same thing applies when you're figuring out width. So if I'm going with five squares around at the top, I want to decide, okay, so how much, how much play do I want them to have? I want, I want this to fit them for a long time. So let's say I want it to be 40 inches around. And trust me, that sounds huge, but you can gather it up and it's still going to look very cute. But let's say 40 inches around for that. You got, that's got to accommodate the widest part. So hips and waist. Okay, typically a little girl, usually her waist is where she's widest at. And so, but make sure you measure both and then go by the largest size and then add several more inches to that to give her room to grow. So just kind of figure that out. But let's say we're going to go 35, 40 inches, whatever. We'll, do, we'll go ahead and say 40 inches. So I'm going to take 40 inches and I'm going to add to that the amount of squares I'm using five squares across because that's going to give me my seam allowance. So, four, so 40 plus 5 is 45 inches. Okay, so now, <laughs> now that I've done that, I know how much I need around to end up with about 40 inches. So now I'm going to take that 45 inches and divide it again by the number of squares I'm using around. 45 divided by 5 is nine. So here, nine inch squares sounds like the perfect size for getting about a 21 inch length and 40 inches around so that she has plenty of room to grow. And yes, you should be able to cinch it up to about 18 inches or less, depending on how you do your drawstring. You want to make sure you don't put too big of a piece of elastic in there at the back. If you're going to do this sewing the elastic to the draw and then a drawstring on each end. I would keep it about maybe somewhere between six and eight inches tops on that elastic in the back if you're wanting to be able to cinch it up pretty small. So I don't know if that's making any sense, but that should give you a pretty good idea. So now let's say you've put your skirt together, you've got you, you, you decided to go with nine inch squares because you wanted to be generous, maybe allow a little extra for the seam allowance, a little extra in case you made a mistake. And then you get it all together, but don't do the waist yet. Just put, put the three tiers together. Don't hem it yet either. And then, and then try it on, whoever's going to wear it, or, or if nothing else, because obviously in my case, I can't try it on. Once I get to that point, I measure the skirt from the top to the bottom and see what length I have. That's going to tell me how much I have left to do my hem and my waist. Now I should have more than enough at that point for the hem and the waist. So then maybe I'll go ahead and do the hem. Then I'll measure it again. Now if I need to cut some off the top, that's where I'm going to do it. It's better to have the top part be shorter than to have the bottom part be shorter. So if it looks like I get it all together, I do the hem and I measure it and and figure in what my waist is going to be yeah, after I fold it over twice then and it still looks like it's going to be way too long and it's going to be dragging on the ground then I'll cut whatever I need to cut off off the top tier and then I'll go ahead and put that waist in and usually that comes out just right but the key is to make sure you're measuring every time measure every single time because when, you know, again, when it comes to a little girl skirt, you're wanting her to wear it for as long as possible. If you're going to put the time and the money into the skirt, you want to make sure that she's going to be able to wear it for a long period of time. So having it go clear to her ankles at least, I recommend that. And then, you know, but obviously you don't want it too long or she's going to be tripping on it, stomping on it, and, you know, getting it dirty and tearing it and stuff like that. Now, back to making an adult skirt. If you're needing it to be longer than 36 inches, then let's say you need to add 4 inches to the overall skirt. Then I recommend going <clears throat> 10 by 11 for every single section of the skirt. So every rectangle, you're not going to have squares. Every part of the skirt that you cut out or rip out is going to be 10 by 11 and making sure that you're going 11 inches this way. Okay, so that's one way to do it. Another way to do it, which is what I did for someone else, is I added two inches to the top tier and then two inches to the bottom tier and left the center tiers 
10 by 10. So I did 10 by 12 for the top and 10 by 12 for the bottom. Because, and the reason for that is, is that once you hem it up, the bottom tier and the top tier always are going to look shorter than the two middle tiers anyway. So if you add most of your length to either the top or the top and the bottom, then that's going to give a better overall look to the skirt when you do it that way. But it's just a matter of choice, whatever is easiest for you. Anyway, so there's a couple of ideas, something that you can work with. And I will also be doing a separate video on how to add the hidden interior pockets to the sides of the skirts. And I've been doing that. I just came up with the pattern. I just drew it out, made it, started putting it in, figured it out on my own. And it's, it's relatively simple, but there is a little bit of a trick of, of doing it and having it come out as neat as possible. So I had to try it a few different ways before I could find the easiest way to get the pocket into the skirt where it can come together smoothly and quickly and not take too much extra time, but also have a good secure pocket. So be watching for that video coming out down the road. I can't say when, I don't know how soon I'll be able to get to it, but I'll try not to put it off for too long. Sometimes I just simply forget. So if you don't see it for a month or so, remind me and uh, I'll get to it. So anyway, I hope that helps. That's the thing about sewing. I mean, people will ask me what size squares would you use? Well, I don't know because it's going to depend on that child width, length, how much play you want it, and all that kind of stuff. And so it's going to be all a matter of you figuring out the math. And I hope that I did that clear enough that it made sense. And that's why I wanted to do this video because typing it up can be a little bit confusing, you know, and, and, and it's really time consuming for me to have to try to type all that out every single time. So I was also hoping to make this video to give people something they can link back to or that I could link them to so they could go, okay. So hopefully that was clear enough. Again, do your measurements, get your calculator if you need it, and do your, figure out how to do your multiplication and your division to, to figure all that out so that it's going to work properly. Okay, well I hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new, and I hope you found it helpful. Thanks for watching, take care, and God bless.